Hi there, have you got a Stream Deck? Did you know you can actually use it to display live data from Hardware Info? Get ready for tutorial that's going to be out of this world. No guarantees on that, but hopefully it is. How do we monitor using Hardware Info and our Stream Deck? Well, get ready for this experience. So there's the Stream Deck, there's the video outline. Take a quick look. We're looking at recording performance doing some video rendering in DaVinci Resolve Studio 18 and this is that outer world experience that I was talking about look at that wow get ready for the experience that is definitely going to help you record your data by data I mean your computer data the relevant stuff everything that you would like to monitor so what are we using the HPZ 840 workstation we're also using a stream deck very useful we will be able to output a custom array of data to monitor every key thing that you might want to monitor on your Z or any computer for that matter. Let's have a look at this. First things first, loading hardware info, the software itself, there's freeware. Check out my previous video if you want more information on how to do that process. But here it is. Now on first glance, there's quite a lot of detail here. We have temperatures for the CPU, we have clock speeds, we have RAM specifications, right down to memory timing i mean that's a lot of data do we really need to see all of it i mean cpu ram temps hard drive what do we actually want to monitor now you're asking the right questions so the bigger thing that we want to do here is try and narrow down oh what's that 84 degrees that's a little bit hot on that nvme we'll keep an eye on that hopefully it doesn't go any higher that could cause problems the ASIC controller should be around 70 degrees, ideally less than 70 for optimal drive speeds. So right now that's suboptimal. We'll have to work on that in a future video. But for now, let's keep scanning through. Everything here looks fine. There's our GPU specifications. That's running nice and cool, which is really good to see. Even the hotspot temperatures are well below, say, 65 degrees. That's fantastic. But how do we manage this data set? How do we actually get this to be useful? right now there's a lot of data there you may not want to always look at all of it but if we click on settings first things first in order to even use your stream deck to monitor your data this setting must be toggled shared memory support take note yes there is a 12 hour limit so after 12 hours you got to come back and re-tick that option otherwise it doesn't work unless you're on the paid platform in which case you'll be fine so First things first, how do we narrow this down? Well, you can go to layout. Right now, you'll notice there are three options here. We can, let's readjust that a bit, that's better. You can do monitoring, you can do show, you can do fixed order. And oh, did you guys see that warning notification that NVMe is overheating? Okay, that one's 63, that's toasty, but that's not the worst temperature. Where's that overheating one? Let's keep going up. Oh, there it, oh wow, 85 degrees. Okay, so that's triggered an alarm. We'll see if we can keep going here. You'll notice the footage is sped up. I don't want to bore you guys with all the basic stuff. What am I doing here? We're trying to remove items that are likely not... Oh, that warning popped up again. The hard drive's having a tough time. We're trying to remove data that we don't want to display. Now, to do this, I'm just untoggling show. I still want to monitor the data. It could be useful. But for the most part, I just want to tidy up the output, the data output. Now, in terms of alerts, let me show you where to find this alert. It kept popping up several times. If you go to the alert tab at the top, you'll notice you could toggle any single one of these. Now, let's find this NVMe's specifications. There it is, drive temperature 2. So that's of our controller. I set a limit of 85 degrees. If it gets there, it needs to notify me. That is critical. Should really not be over 70. But lots of features, you can fine tune it, right down to color, sound, even a custom alert. It's up to you. You can fine tune any single one of those. Let's increase that to 86 for now. That should clear that warning, unless it goes up a degree, hopefully not. So very useful there. So back to our sensor screen, you'll notice we've cleaned up some of the data outputs, minimizing some of them. So we have a slightly cleaner output. Now, why are we doing this? Well, it's only for data recording. How are we going to record data? There's only one way of doing it. DaVinci Resolve Studio 18. So we're going to do some rendering. For now, let's get this recording running. So on the bottom of our Hardware Info software, we have an option to data log. 
So typing out my data log file name, we'll save that on one of the NVMEs, I presume. Ah, oh, some nice effects there, that's cool. Okay, that looks really cool. So we can scan through, we can monitor every single temperature on this machine. But that was lightweight, we need to get to something a bit more uh, heavy lifting. But we'll save that for later. For now, let's show you how to use your Stream Deck to monitor hardware info. So here it is. First things first, you're going to scan through and you'd think it might be something like system open, but no, keep going all the way down the bottom. You're going to see a tab that says custom. That's the one that we're after. There is another way much quicker. Just go to the search bar up top, type in HW and you're right there. Now, how do we insert it? Well, click and drag is the magic. And once it's there, you need to select a sensor. You can choose any one of them. A little bit of fine tuning, you'll find out what you could monitor, like CPU temperature, CPU use, hard drive temperatures, hard drive read and write speeds. It's, a, it's up to you. You can customize it, whatever you need. So for now, let's do a demo here. We'll go with some uh, onboard details for the memory. Could be useful, monitoring your memory in a display format. That looks kind of cool. Wow, that's a lot of memory. We're using 41 at the moment. Excellent. Okay, we'll keep going here. Fully custom, we'll go with a nice contrasting orange just so those things stand out and you can tell them apart just with a quick glance oh you can even monitor frame rate that could be useful that's a dreadful frame rate right now why are we on 4 fps terrible it's okay i don't think that's accurate let's keep going memory timing what's your memory clock speed what's your memory multiplier ah oh, this is fantastic so much data we can see in live time but you want to scan through and find things that you actually find relevant of monitoring. So I'm going to go for GPU. Be really useful to check the power draw. That's for the 8 pin number 1 connector, maybe not as useful. GPU clock speed, yeah, you could definitely monitor that. That's useful, but really focus on temperature. Now, quick side note there, the Stream Deck Mini can actually be sourced on Amazon for under 100 US dollars. That's uh, August pricing there, 2022. That's a good price. So would you be willing to spend that money? I don't know. It's up to you guys. But I really think this is a useful device. And even if you just had a few data outputs, that'd be really useful to keep an eye on. Live streaming, very easy to keep track of those. Oh, that NVMe just melted down again. Look at that. 85 degrees peak, 82. Okay, let's do the render. That's what we're here for. We want to see this machine do some work while doing some data logging. Now, the best way to output this data is in a user-friendly format. Let's have a look at that. Now, while we're doing this, very, very important to consider what are we actually going to do with the data? How are we going to use it? What is the point of recording while doing a video export? Well, you'll see the render process in the background there. Uh, yes, the footage has been sped up. That's about 23, 24 minutes worth of export. The data, yes, that's complicated, but that's the joy of hardware info. You get some incredible data. Keynotes, we used quite a lot of our CPU power. Temperatures were actually really good, which was cool. The hard drive specifications, so pretty decent. That 970 is overrunning. If you want to see the data, actually uh, read it. Pause on one of these sections, going really quick. Nice summary there. Key data to consider. The CPUs were running at a pretty good temperature. Uh, they're currently running Arctic Silver Paste. Now, oh, that's pretty good coverage. Now, there is the option there to install the Vapor Cooler. Now, they're probably required for the CPUs that I'm running at the moment, the E52697V3s, but in this particular situation, we're managing to get those temperatures to stay nice and cool. So it really depends on the workload. If you're pushing your CPUs to 100% workload for extended periods, absolutely you're going to need to get the uprated Z coolers. But in this particular case, if you're not always pushing it right onto the limit, you may actually get away with a good thermal paste. And uh, there are lots of good thermal paste out there. I'm still using an Arcag one for now, but it works really well. I think Silver, nothing wrong with it. It works really well, at least in my applications. Okay, well done there. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. We will continue on the next series. So stay tuned. Lots of good content coming out. Don't go anywhere. Until next time.